Hi, Kevin here. Well, today I wanted to bring you on a short walk through some of the gardens here at Clover Hill. I'm going to show you the good, the bad, and maybe even the downright ugly. All right, we are approaching the garden gate. And here we are in the boxwood garden. Yeah, this garden was an asphalt parking lot when we purchased the property. I dug up all of that asphalt and planted boxwood and 180 taxus hicksi which are commonly known as the upright U. So the garden is in a figure eight. And since I didn't have enough money to buy enough boxwood to make these hedges, I planted just enough little boxwood plants to do rough outlines of the shapes I wanted. And then I took cuttings from those plants and put them in the soil between the existing boxwood and all of those cuttings grew roots in about six to eight weeks. So I ended up with an enormous boxwood garden that was, well, practically for free. Here are two weeping crabapple trees. These were wedding gifts back in 2011, and I really love their form. They are red jade crab apples, so they form red buds in early spring, and then the buds open pink and then fade to white. And here's one of the flowers right here. Actually, there are two unopened buds right above it. See how red they are? So red jade crab apple. And there are two fountains in this garden. I'm sorry, I don't have them running right now. And in some of the beds, I have David Austin roses. They are not in bloom yet, so we will have to visit this garden again when the roses are in flower. And now I mentioned that I was going to show you some of the bad and the ugly. Here we go. We are working on this garden shed. Actually, our handyman is working on the shed. It was falling apart. So he has replaced the roof on one side and then he's going to finish the roof on the other side, well, later this week, we hope. The rose here is Zephyrin Drawn. It's a thornless rose. We will have to visit it again when it's in bloom. And continuing on, past a lot of debris from this project. We come to the Serpentine Garden. And this is the garden that I designed on the steepest hill on the property. Let's walk up the steps here. It's a very gentle climb. I love this garden. It might be my favorite because it's very shady in here, very mysterious. The ground cover is Vinca Minor. Here's another dwarf crab apple tree right here. I don't remember the variety name. Here's a hemlock. Yeah, I planted all of these trees 
Here's a Yoshino cherry, which finished flowering about two weeks ago. Here's a little bench. This is a wonderful place to sit and enjoy a glass of wine. The blue and pink flowers on the lower right are Phlox subulata, also known as creeping phlox. And above the phlox are dwarf lilacs that are just starting to open their flowers. And boy, are these flowers fragrant. I think lilac might be my favorite scent of all the floral fragrances. So let's walk up the path here. It's a very hilly property. Yeah. yeah, the lilacs are all starting to open now. Oh, I can really catch the perfume now. Here's a row of very tall arborvitae, which I planted when it was just about six feet tall. It must be, I don't know, maybe 18 feet tall now. And I put it here to screen the swimming pool. We move up, very tall. And then here we come to some brick steps flanked by cast iron urns. I purchased these urns at auction several years ago for a song. And I did not paint them because I really like the rusty, rustic look. If you're ever looking for garden statuary or urns, visit auctions. You'll get the best deal. And around the corner is the kitchen garden. We won't go in here today because it's just getting started. I've planted the potatoes and the onions and the butternut squash and some tomatoes. But everything's very young right now. I'll show you the front gate of the kitchen garden. Yeah. This rose is Gertrude Jekyll. It's another David Austin rose. And I'm training it up this arbor. If you have a rose growing on an arbor or any kind of trellis, if you bend the canes gently into a lateral position, or rather a horizontal position, then new vertical stems will shoot up and those will be flowering stems. So you'll have many more flowers. Here's my beloved shredded leaves that are turning themselves into leaf mold which is one of the very best soil amendments. All natural, all free, because it came from the leaves of my deciduous trees. Now we're coming up to the pool garden. Open the gate. This garden is surrounded by hemlocks. 
which are also evergreen. And I know hemlock is not everybody's cup of tea, but I love it. I also like how statuary looks against the evergreen background. This is Miss, or should I say Ms. Summer. She is holding a sheath of wheat. Look at the new growth on the hemlock. It's this light green color, beautiful. And here is Ms. Autumn. And she is holding a bunch of grapes. There's one more statue in here. It's the satyr. Satyrs were soldiers uh, in the army of Bacchus. Bacchus was the god of wine. And they were lecherous soldiers who routinely went after the nymphs. During the pandemic last summer, I set up two tables here so that we could entertain guests and be socially distanced at the same time. Okay, we can exit this garden. Oh, remember, when I said that I propagate boxwood, here's more. All along the front and the side of the kitchen garden. And then I have more boxwood here, also from rooted cuttings, forming two demi loon beds. And the beds, well, the path between the beds leads to the woodland garden, which we will not be visiting today. So let's head back to the house. Oh, if you want to learn how to propagate boxwood, and it is really easy to do, I wrote a tutorial on my blog, and I will post a link to that blog post in the description box below. And here's a back view of the house. This long wing on the right is the music room wing where you and I have had afternoon tea at least a couple of times. To the left of the music room is the old kitchen wing. It's actually the original building on this property from 1795. The main house behind, where you can see the two chimneys, was built in 1826. The music room was built somewhere between 1850 and 1870. Now we're going to go back just outside of the big boxwood garden because there's something else I wanted to show you. Okay, this is the new patio we've put in. It's mostly made of bluestone. And this is the pergola, which we will either paint or stain next year. We built this pergola because we wanted to put a long table underneath. I wanted to show you these hanging baskets. This is Calabricoa, what's the name here? Chameleon Frozen Ice. 
and the flowers are indeed an icy blue. I really love Calabricoa because it blooms constantly without the need for deadheading. I have another one over here. And then on the table are Riggle or Martha Washington pelargoniums. In America, pelargoniums are commonly called geraniums. These look at these ruffled flowers. Love them. Regal geraniums make terrific house plants. In fact, when these stop flowering, I'm going to take cuttings, root them, and then I will have flowers indoors that will bloom in February. I did just that many years ago and the Regal pelargoniums were delightful to have in my windows. And then here's an urn that is planted with blue lobelia and this larkspur over here and these gorgeous whiny colored dahlias. And the dahlias are just constantly budding. Of course, I do deadhead them. And then I recently planted up a pair of window boxes. This is planted with annual vinca and pelargonium. I think the variety is called Americana. It's a purple pink color. And then there's a filler in here, some white flower. I don't recall the name. And then there's this purple number that is going to trail down, just as the annual vinca will do. Well, I almost feel that we should have a cocktail in the garden. So maybe we'll do that next time. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know what's happening in your own garden. And if you like this video, please post a comment below. I always love hearing from you. That's all for today. Thanks so much for watching. Bye for now.